well someone has been busted right here that is the INEC chairman and uh, uh, we were told that he actually uh, secured his reappointment with huge sum of money but I wonder if that is really possible but of course we all know that there's nothing that is impossible to me I just feel who exactly is he paying this money to for him to be reappointed uh, reappointed because really the appointment came from the president Muhammad Buhari and uh, even yet is yet to be confirmed by the senate because senate said uh, for the for this very uh, reason they are not sitting at this very time that when they resume they would work on his uh, confirmation as uh, the chairman of INEC but of course there might be some iota of truth in this but let us find out what exactly it is and how much he paid to get reappointment to get his reappointment more details will come to you shortly but please if you have not subscribed ensure you hit the subscribe button and also give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to turn on your notification bell all right it says right here that how INEC chairman pay three billion naira to secure reappointment Yes, findings have revealed that securing his second tenure in office didn't come cheap for Professor Yakubu as he had to part ways with huge sums of money to facilitate his reappointment. Inside details of how Chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, secured reappointment for his second term in office have emerged. But like many public officials favored by the power blocks in Aso Rock Villa, Nigerian seat of power, he was immediately rewarded with another term of five years. However, findings by some of our correspondents have revealed that securing a second tenure in office didn't come true for Professor Yakubu as he had to part ways with huge sums of money to facilitate this appointment. According to top insider, Yakubu paid at least 3 billion naira in bribes to have his tenure as INEC chairman extended by another five years. He paid a priceless sum of two billion naira to a group led by Senate President Hamad Lawan and another one billion naira to another group. These huge funds were deployed and mobilized by a civil servant and director in INEC who is described as wealthy and in charge of a strategic department. The director was also aided by a contractor to the commission, Mohammed Sanu Musa, who is presently a seventh senator from Niger State responsible for the printing of INEC ballot papers used to used for elections under a company activate technologies the source told us it was further gathered that the reappointment of Yakubu was as INEC boss was further made possible with the death of President Buhari's former chief of staff Abba Kiari and Halid Alaji Isa Funtua and the disappearance from public glare of Maman Daura a key member of a trusted group of allies Buhari relies on before making important decisions. The absence of these men, it was gathered, created a perfect avenue for powerful government officials with vested interest to persuade the president into handing Yakubu a first term in office. According to the source, the return of Yakubu as INEC boss was part of a larger ongoing tussle among power brokers in the country to have the agency under their firm control ahead of 2023 general elections which to a large extent will determine the fate of the ruling or progressive congress there are currently at least four power blocks within the apc all fighting to determine persons to occupy key positions in the agencies ahead of 2023 one group is said to be headed by senate president lawan another by attorney general of the federation and minister of justice abubakar malami a third by Deputy Senate President O.V. Omar Gege, while the fourth group comprises key individuals in Asorok Villa alongside Bola Tinubu Kakos. In the current struggle to take over INEC, the Asorok group took the lead every very early to outsmart others when they forwarded the names of Ms. Loretta Onoche as a National Commi Commissioner nominee to replace a South-South candidate, Dr. Mustafa Leki representing the zone whose tenure elapsed on November 9. Unfortunately, Mr. Lecky is the INEC chairmanship candidate being sponsored by the Deputy Senate President Omar Gege, hence he vehemently raised legitimate concerns about the credibility of Onoche 
even though in actual fact he did that because of the implication of that choice of his own candidate, who is reputed to be the most corrupt national commissioner and a consultant to politicians. The Asura group put on a chair forward even when a seven South South candidate was from the same senatorial zone in Delta State. In the haste to extinguish the deputy Senate president candidate, they failed to conduct the required on-ground diligence in Delta State. In any event, the action of the Asura group also took the Senate president group by surprise when they later containing the nomination of the INEC National Commissioner nominee, including Honor Chair, who was sent to the Senate president and it was read on the floor of the Senate. The shock and out tactics by the Asura group pushed Ahmed Lawan group a few hours later to respond by writing on public sentiment against the nomination. Hence, it was reported that the Senate caucus then wrote to the president requesting for another nominee to replace Honor Chair. This was done to enable the Lawan group to perfect their own ongoing compromise negotiation with Professor Yakubu, who was desperate to get a second term and was willing to meet any demands made on him to secure a second term. To preempt the AGF Malami group that had already penciled their own chairmanship candidate, who is also a professor from the North, the Lawan group moved quickly ahead of the Malami group to get the nod of President Buhari. And immediately, Professor Yakubu's reappointment was announced in the media, but no letter to effect was read on the floor of the Senate. The procedure omission was to checkmate Malami's group and were also going to get an approval from the president. The tragedy of the presidency at the moment is that any group that gets to the president first gets endorsement. In fact, the recent strategy is to get your nominee for any appointment announced first in the media to commit the government and then get the president's signature on it later. And that was how the Ahmad Lawan group triumphed from now before the Senate proceeded on recess to deal with the 2021 budget. So guys, obviously you can see what I was talking about, that who gets the money? And I'm very sure you can see that... Uh, it was the Senate President Hamad Lawan who gets this just to, you know, stamp that uh, uh, Yakubu gets a reappointment by the President. That is what happens in Nigeria now. No more credible candidates. They just fix those that will be favorable to them. And that is exactly what has happened. Well, guys, that is it from here. Thank you for listening. Whatever you have to say, please drop it in the comment section. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Do have a pleasant time. Bye for now.